Well, hey there, this is Jerry and Curtis, and uh, we're bringing you another episode of What's Broke Today. And today we've got a trailer that, if you notice, well, I'll let the dog show you. <laughs> um, Curtis, watch out. Oh, uh, stay back. Okay, where we start here, trailer's bent down, boop, boop, and makes a big smiley face. And then, as we come up through here, we got bend, 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 and three of the other cross braces. And uh, I'm going to start out with, I'm going to actually cut the rear cross brace with the gate off. Because he brought me one, two, six new pieces of angle iron and two new hinges to put the gate back on so these things are kind of cute little uh, hinges that come apart and then you can you can grease them and they weld on so I'm gonna start cutting and I'm gonna do something a little different I'm gonna set the camera to do a time lapse while I cut that rear angle off and then I'm gonna come back and look and see how it turns out Okay, well I got the uh, the rear section that held the gate up that has a piece that's bent the worst off and they have to say the others um, as far as the crossbars are looking good what I think I'm going to end up doing I need to finish cutting the little pieces off where it attaches on the ends here at the back and then I think I'm going to get my jack and my log chain out because I bet I can straighten those up and then take my new angle iron and weld on the bottom and box those in and make those crossbars stronger and then uh, might even do some creativeness and figure out how I can do something similar here on the back to uh, make the back a little stronger you know or I can tell him to stop loading too much because what he's doing is hauling a Toro Dingo on this and those things are extremely heavy so he had this trailer overloaded when he had the Dingo on it so but so much better now I might have to take this up and get on the concrete and probably put it up on some jack stands and tomorrow, we'll go after it with our chain. Well, hey, it, yeah, I did a bunch of work yesterday straightening on these bars. Turns out, all he really wants me to do, he bought all this new metal, cut these out, weld new in, call it good, weld this. So, I'll probably show you a little bit of how I was trying to straighten these, but I'm going to edit out most of that. I'm going to... Okay, getting ready to start on my straightening, and I thought I'd bring my straight edge out, and you can see this one, I mean, I'm going to say right about there is probably in that area is the lowest point, so maybe about, oh, five-eighths of an inch. Come back to this one, and that's probably a over an inch and then this one uh, probably about three quarters of an inch and this is the only one that may give me a little bit of challenge in straightening because of the, the inner fenders so may end up cutting that one and swapping that one out because I got the angle iron and it actually probably because these are only welded here and out here 
But what I was going to try to do was see if I could take some of this buckle. If I could straighten this up, then I could take a new piece, put underneath the bottom, <coughs> weld them together and make a square tube, which would be a lot stronger for in the future. I'll take one hook. I was going to go here on the outside and hook on the outer rail. Because basically I want that chain to be as straight in line with the middle of this angle iron as possible. And I can just take this and come across and I think I want my hook right there so There's one link. Oh yeah, which one is more than enough. If it wasn't for filming, I'd be sitting on that side. <laughs> but mainly I want to take my straight edge and figure. be somewhere about in there Jack setting, but well, you can see I've already basically pushed all the bow out. Just the jack feels like it wants to kick out. We'll go up a little more and then we'll stop. Yeah, it didn't get all of it out, but that got part of it. We'll move up one and go, because this was probably the worst. And I'm going to say right about in there. And the C-clamp is going to try and keep the jack from sliding toward me and help keep it from kicking out. Now see that's all the part I got to go to get straight. Pretty close. Yeah, I'm going to go get stuff. I'm going to cut that middle one out because it's hampering me straightening as much as I want to here in the back. 
I'm going to start out cutting the outside weld, so just pull the tire off. And then I'm just going to take this and kind of go down at an angle right through the center of that weld. And now I'm just going to go to the tire on the other side on the out and take it off and do the same thing over there. And then I'll change out my wheels and cut out cut in on the inside in a similar fashion. Well, I went to the other side and cut and uh, which may be hard to see, but if you get the angles right, you can cut right through the weld and it just falls loose and I'm going to try because I've already cut on the outside here. So, let's see if I can do the same thing on this side. Alright, here we go. And when you get it right, that's what happens. <laughs> In this case, we're just going to take a new piece, which we'll have to go out to the barn, weld a new piece in. See, with getting that bent part out of there, it actually makes it easier to deal with these because right there, um, now oh, maybe about three sixteenths of an inch off. So it's kind of liking staying at that amount of bend, but well, that's better because now I'll give you an example of when I'm doing this this way, what makes it difficult is is when it bent down, it stretched this. So naturally, when I'm pushing up, I'm trying to compress that. But I think I'm going to um, finish cutting these corners apart and get everything ready to do some welding. I think I'm going uh, to save the rest of the straightening until I'm putting metal back in. And I also got to take my angle grinder and my port a band saw and cut this out because they welded in here, across here, on the outside, in the corner. So. Yeah, I'm going to try and cut down, which I may just see if I can go from here, cut up through 
to there and cut this outer lip off and then I can do the same thing with this weld that I did up at the front and with good cutoff wheels and this portable bandsaw this really isn't too bad cutting all this stuff apart Of course, I didn't time that, but that really didn't take me that long to cut through that. You probably couldn't hear, but I was, I was cutting here, this cross here. When I made it through the weld, you actually hear it pop. And then this one, I'm going to try and go almost straight in. Maybe a little bit down. Likewise, another pop, and now I can see the gap. And then all I can do is come around here to the back side and basically do the same thing. And if I get it right, I basically ground on the weld and this piece and didn't hardly touch the trailer, which is the goal. And then I'll have a little bit to grind off there and maybe a little bit there, but yeah, some straightening. But all I got to do is the same thing to the other side and then um, we're about ready to do some welding. These pieces of steel he brought me, I think, are 80 inches long, so I got to cut them down. Uh, cut a couple more. Cut these last two out, because I think he's going to use these for something else. So I'm just going to cut them completely off, um, and then start putting the new ones in. And uh, yes, I have to push some of it out because, like, my width up there, where they are straight. Inside to inside is 75 and three quarters. As I work my way back, it gets a little less. So I'll just gently push it out, make it all 75 and three quarters. Um, put my new angle iron underneath, and uh, but we're gonna just go ahead and cut them off. And probably this next phase of it, I'm gonna put this back in time lapse mode and. Um, start cutting and then um, I'll have to get the wheels off and uh, we'll do some more welding and get her going. All right, get, get started on the next step. I got, they're all cut out now. 
I've got uh, four new pieces up here on the rail. And then I'm going to take and measure across the outside, the outside, and I've got right at 76 inches. So I'm going to cut those pieces about 76 and a quarter. That way, I'm basically just like the old ones. It's stuck out a little bit, and it gives me kind of a, you know, a 90 degree where I can weld a bead in instead of trying to weld you know straight across into it I can kind of go down and get penetration both ways and uh, pencil Watch out, though. how you can tell when ash and trouble are close gypsy and onyx are close I have a clingy dog so uh, We'll come up here. Mark 76 and a quarter. And I got all four of these stacked, so I'm going to get my porta band going, cut all four of them at the same time. And back here where I cut the old ones out, I don't think I showed earlier, I took my pencil and marked where they were at. So I get ready to put them back in. I'll uh, I put them in the exact spot. And then getting prepper, getting prep ready to weld them. I'm actually where this old weld is. Try to the face shield. I want to come in here and Okay, so Get that all cleaned up, get all that old weld off, so I'm ready for the new. And then like here, I can feel a little bit of where it's hanging down. Um, I'm going to hit that and knock it off. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up and do the rest of those in a little bit. But uh, with my porta band, now that I got this marked, and it's so much easier. It takes a little longer, but it's easier to cut all of them at the same time. Yeah, and that really doesn't take that long with one of these. And I'll see. I wasn't sure how I'd like it, so I bought a used one that plugs into the wall. Um. And this one had been gone through, um, you know, had new brushes put in it and all the gears checked before I bought it. The only thing that was missing was the uh, covers. But uh, I may actually break down and buy one of these in the cordless fashion because uh, it is so handy to have. I mean, I've, I've used it a lot and uh, I bought the Genuine uh, Milwaukee Blades. And, uh, and I got some, these are, um, you know, where they're dual pitch, they got, um, you know, the teeth are different, uh, teeth per inch, so, um, it cuts through a, a wide variety of things and relatively fast. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to finish my grind and getting ready to weld. And get everything set up to weld and then uh, I'll be back. So I get my angle iron put in. But of course I, you know, I need to get it clamped. But one thing I do is I take a piece of string and make a loop. So I can hang it on one end. Then I can take and clamp it where I want it on the other end. And secure that end. And every one on this side is set at the where I want it to stick out on the outside and then 
I'm going to take my tape measure and come back here and basically measure, you know, I'll go back up there and re-measure, make sure my distance, which is I think is 76 inches. I'm going to come back here and do my 76 inches. And then I'll clamp, you know, this the rest of the way down. Because I kind of wondering is, because see when I get to this point, I have a feeling that this trailer on the sides is a little bit wavy, even though, you know, it's hard sometimes to look the straight line and tell if it's straight. But, uh, needless to say, I got, these clamps are just, you know, snug. They're not, you know, tight by any means. And I'll get my tape measure and do my measuring. We'll hook it over the outside over there. Attempt to hook it over the outside. Then come over here and see I'm actually right at 76. Now I'll come back to the second cross brace, hook it, right at 76. Then I'll come here, and that might be a little hard to judge because, you know, the more I look at it, the more I see things. And actually, I'm just a hair over 76. So that kind of surprised me. I figured I was narrow. So needless to say, I'm going to tighten that down. Then when we get back here at the back, Yeah, I'm actually just about 76 and a quarter. So, I think I'll get my a ratchet strap and put back here and pull this together just a little. And, um, yeah, and we're just about ready to weld. And when I actually start welding, I'm just going to put on time lapse. And uh, we'll try that again. And uh, yeah, because I don't think you need to watch me in real time do every bit of welding. <laughs> Well, I got the gate here. Next thing I'm going to do is slice off these hinges.
there's hinge number one. So I'm going to cut the other one off and then we'll get back at it. Well, I've got the gate moved and put up on here and I'm going to need to do a little straightening here and now well, yeah a little bit there because I had to use a ratchet strap to pull the rails in to get it over the pins but it got it up on there and then I was using the jack in the middle to lift it up so that when I weld the hinges on I take the jack out the weight of the gate will be pushing down instead of and it should keep it from hopefully hanging up here on the ends but we'll see because see that one and I can't remember I, I've redone one or two of these pieces here I just don't remember which trailers of his but uh yeah so the, that hole's really fairly precise yeah and that was actually pretty good too other than you know where it's worn into this clip because the gate everything was out of whack yeah, and the hinges he brought me these are I mean kind of cool in a way they're greasable and then like um, when I took the old ones off this pin had broke free on this side but you know that pin's fixed and we got a lot of final it's like a brass spacer and we can put these up there and adjust them you know the biggest thing is I think the actual overall gate I mean it almost needs to go up higher but yeah I don't know how we're going to deal with that because yeah I got I'm it's real tempting to cut the uh, these brackets off up here where the pens are and move them even though looking at these I'm not sure these are ones I've redone because I don't see where it looks like I've cut them off before but. I don't know how well you can see that but yeah I can see when I get down underneath here I mean the gates a little lower on this side than it is on that side but I got to clean here and clean here and then this has got to kind of go in there something like that you know be squared up and the basic thing is this side's going to end up being lower than the other side but Yeah, just not really sure. I'm going to put some more thought into this. Well, after a lot of thought, um, what I end up, I'll get down, down, end up tack welding the hinges, then I dropped the gate down, and I had this ter Curtis get off, um, had this terrible transition. So if you got your mower and you're coming up the gate, you know, if I'd left it where it was at, you'd have had this big lip. So I looked at where our gate needed to be, needed to be to be square here at the back of the trailer. So I'm going to actually weld these so that <clears throat> it's more even. Um, yeah, because the way I was starting out, what really wasn't going to be the way to do it. So I'm going to get set up and. Uh, get everything lined up and then we can start uh, welding it this way and then of course after I do that where it, the pieces on the end that go on the pins I'm gonna have to move them now to get started out on redoing the hinges I kind of lined them up at common points on the gate and then I got the gate uh, the bottom half welded you know where I'll have to weld upside down 
and just a tack on the top side I can weld once I put it back up on the uh, trailer. Okay, so what I've done is I took the um, hinges that went on the, the gate, and on the bottom side, I welded all the way across, and I tacked the top side, and got them where they're almost flush here and straight on both sides. And then this, I've got it down a little, just so that, you know, that your transition here, this just barely sticks up. Because we're going to, when we put the floor in, we're going to add a bar on top of this to hold the floor. And I stuck this punch in here. So it's going to pull that out just a little bit. And then where that uh, um, hinge, you know, is kind of teardrop shaped. I'm going to turn that teardrop up against the trailer at the bottom and weld her up that way. So it has a little bit of clearance in between the hinge and the back bar. I'm going to just do a tack on this side and then move over to the other side. Oh yeah, so I just filled in the grooves there on the both sides on that. Now I'm going to take my strap off and let's raise the gate up. See how far off my uh, mounts are. And see this one's going to have to move <laughs> quite a bit. And that one's a long ways. So... I'm going to cut those angles off and then uh, we'll get them reset and re-welded. Alright, after cutting my deals off, I got them uh, cleaned up. I cleaned up all you know, rust so I could did weld easier and C-clamped them. The only thing I was a little having trouble with is this rail needed to come in a little. Um, I'm going to weld the other side. And I'm actually cutting, just put a shim in there and move that out just a hair so it um, fits better. But yeah, I'm going to weld the other side and then we'll see what we got. Okay, I made me a 316 shim and welded on there. I actually welded it to the angle and then welded it to the trailer. So, uh, that should help hold that on there. Plus, um, let me take the strap completely loose. And with the strap loose, we slide on and off. A little tight, but that works. And that leaves me, all I got left to do is come down under here and... Uh, do some welding on the bottom side of that one hinge which shouldn't take very long okay well I got everything done that he wanted done I got the three crossbars you know that were bent in the middle I got the rear one which I just redid it just basically like it was before um, got everything welded in good um, of course got the gate um, remounted and our latches repositioned and yeah I'll say everything looks good that only thing we got left is he's going to bring the floor and that crossbar that holds it in in the back I'm gonna weld that in but this gate works really nice now um, yeah, I don't think we can go wrong with that. But quite happy with how things turned out considering, you know, it's still got stuff that's bent on it, but at least it's going to be... Because 
I think after we put the wood on, he's actually going to paint it. And he has new lights. Oh, of course, I got the inner fender retack, so it's not flopping. So, yeah, all in all, uh, doing good. But, um, you know, say I appreciate you watching this episode of, I mean, rebuilding this trailer and getting it back up to par so he can get the, uh, you know, actually lawn season's getting ready to start, you know, even though the grass isn't super green, some of it is starting to green up. And it's only uh, February, so and it's going to go to 70 today, I think, so it's beautiful. Hey, I appreciate you watching. Always love those thumbs up for the likes. You know, got any comments, feel free to leave them. And uh, I'll say, if you're not a subscriber, join in, because uh, no telling what else you're going to see on What's Broke Today. Thank you.